welcome to everyone who's watching Creative Talks right now. Uh, today, I have a very special guest here with me who's joining all the way from Rome. He's one of the most awarded creatives in the advertising industry with 54 mm -hmm. Cannes Lions, one Grand Clio and one Grand Prix in New York, film, New York festivals. And he's best known for his work on Heineken, like uh, the most recent being Back to Bars and of course Nescafe's Good Morning. I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Bruno Bertelli, Global Chief Creative Officer of Publicis Worldwide. Hello, Mr. Bertelli, and thank you Hello. so much for joining us. Good afternoon. Pleased to meet you. I hope you've been well. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Great, great. So, lots happening at your India office, uh, be it integration or people movement. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me start with the integration part of it. You know, just, just two months ago, I think uh, the group integrated two of uh, publicity agencies here, uh, BBH and uh, Publicity Worldwide. Now, what are you, your views on this uh, new model, uh, this new structure where two very well-defined agencies report to one common boss? So um, I'm really, really pleased about this, uh, this uh, collaboration between uh, Publicis and, and BBH because they're two different cultures, uh, but at the same time uh, with a very strong uh, brand uh, culture, which I think uh, is, is the common ground for, 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 for the two realities. Uh, and again, uh, in, uh, in India, um, you know, there have been so many good agencies, uh, but kind of uh, stable. Uh, it, it's not like other markets where there are a lot of uh, new entries and new changes. Uh, and I think having some, some uh, newelty actually in the market uh, will, uh, will help. And uh, a new proposition between uh, Publicis and BBH is really, I think, is, is very welcome for, uh, for, uh, for the market. Again, BBH has a great reputation. Uh, Publicis uh, is, uh, was more like a, a, a client, uh, sorry, a, a client focus uh, uh, agency 360. I think the combination the, of the two together can be very interesting for the market. Okay. And, and tell me, how do you go beyond uh, an integration like this? How do you go beyond paper and actually reflect that? You know, how do you get two agencies to become one? And what are the expertise? What are the additional areas of knowledge that it will get, bring together? I, I think, you know, the, 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 the bringing together is um, mainly on a um, uh, management uh, level. Uh, then it's, it's all about uh, getting structure and see, you know, where are the differences and keeping, keeping uh, the, 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 the differences. In this kind of situation, it's really, it's really the, the integration that works. But that doesn't mean that you know, one has to become like uh, the other one. So keeping the difference, I think, is a kind of the secret of, uh, of our success uh, normally. Uh, so uh, I think uh, that that will be, will be very interesting. Again, as I said, for the market uh, and keeping these uh, this, uh, this, uh, two, two different uh, cultures, but actually working together, yes. And, and how do you see an integration like this panning out in other markets? You know, if it's successful, will you uh, bring it to other markets, integrate agencies, both be agencies in other markets? As you, as, as you know, uh, you know, our, our credo, our, our, our belief is uh, uh, the power of one. Uh, <laughs> so Publicis is very client focused, let's say. So market by market, we really try to collaborate and work together depending on the needs of the, of the client. Especially now with what happened with the COVID, there are a lot of needs, you know, uh, that coming from, from, from clients, which is not just the communication related, but also business related. Mm -hmm. So having more uh, brands working together, coming from a different back backgrounds, I think it's, re it's, it's not just a, a, a nice thing to have, it's just really a need. In, uh, in, this, in this moment. More than ever, we need to be partner of our, of our clients uh, uh, in, in this moment. And all, only an integrated approach can, uh, can solve that. And when I say integrated approach, I mean like for real, not just on a PowerPoint and not, not just to sell one agency and another one or whatsoever. So the big question, uh, you know, that in the market at the moment is really how to make uh, creativity and media and data working together for real. In a, in, a, in, a, in a constructive way. I think in the, in the past, uh, the way uh, media uh, and, uh, and the creativity have been working together uh, was more in a way to make actually a creativity uh, more um, efficient, let's say, you know, adjusting creativity depending on the results. Uh, I'm just simplifying. <clears throat> the future will be much more about efficacy. 
So how actually data, information, you know, everything coming from media can help uh, creativity, but at the beginning of the process, not along the process. Okay, makes sense. Will, will make a lot of difference in the future. You know, interestingly, we're having this conversation at a time when your agency in India has been in news. Uh, you know, recently, I think Shrija uh, quit uh, the agency and just before that, Ajay had also exited the firm. Uh, I bet you and your South Asia had have a lot on your plate right now. How are you going about it? Actually, you know, the, the, and this is an, an issue regarding uh, the COVID. I'm used to travel a lot to visit expl explicitly, you know, the new situation or new uh, entries in, uh, in, in especially on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on a creative uh, the director's level. Uh, my idea would be actually to come to India in, in February, you know, to, to actually to talk to the new creative directors and to check uh, the, the situation. Because as you said, there's been changing uh, in, the, in the last two or three years uh, quite often. But I think now, especially with this, uh, with this uh, model between publicists and BBH, this, the, the situation will be much um, um, uh, stable. And then let's go to the awards part. Uh, you know, two years after a no awards policy to support the investment on Marcel, uh, to coming up with your own awards called uh, Cans Do Using Marcel. You know, how has the journey been for Publici? Uh, actually, I have to say, you know, that uh, this, uh, the, 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 the relevance of Marcel uh, has become a, a kind of a necessity with the COVID. So uh, Marcel uh, was a tool that actually um, created a connection, not, mm -hmm. not only between offices and capabilities, uh, but also among uh, people uh, with the same interest, uh, sharing opportunities. Uh, so it was, it, was, it was really amazing, you know. And I think, uh, the, unfortunately, we had this, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, pandemic uh, thing, but this accelerated uh, uh, actually the opportunity to connect to each other and especially mm -hmm. regarding uh, uh, opportunities uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, jobs uh, uh, and so on so um, making actually the process much more flexible i just uh, in, in only us uh, thanks to marcel uh, we, we've been able to save uh, over uh, 1000 actually uh, job places okay you know, so, so how different, how different is, uh, was judging cans do, uh, you know, you've been a jury for a lot of international awards and this was an internal award. So how different was it, especially during the pandemic? I have to, I have to say not, 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 not much different because I've been judging also a couple of other awards still, uh, uh, you know, virtually so from, from, from home. I've been judging the Andes uh, and, uh, and I think also something else. So it was similar process. You go through okay. a lot of work uh, and then uh, you come to, um, uh, to a short list. Uh, the only big difference is the discussion. Obviously, you know, when you are physically in the same jury, you can spend like uh, two or three days uh, discussing about the work uh, going very deeply. Uh, when you are in front of a computer, normally you cannot do it longer than uh, four or five hours. Ah, oh, okay, right. No, I, I'm, I'm sure it was just as tough to win these, uh, these awards as well <laughs> for the people there. It was, it, was, it was amazing, the submission of the work. And again, thinking about the power of one, it was not just a work submitted by creative agencies, but also different structures. You know, we had also work submitted by Epsilon, uh, by mm -hmm. Sapient, uh, by the media agencies. So it, it was a way actually to integrate it even more under the, the, same, uh, the same umbrella, uh, all the different brands. And in this case, it was just about creativity, not about... Uh, you know, effectiveness, uh, results, uh, or whatsoever. It was just a true, a, a true, uh, true creativity. It was very inspiring. And, and tell me, what has been your biggest learning from the pandemic? Uh, and which, which of your agencies across markets have performed uh, really well and responded well to the crisis? It's, it's a good question. Um, I have to say uh, that the, the agency that actually responded uh, better were actually the agency where... Uh, that they got a uh, hit before okay. so for example in in china then in italy uh, you know when uh, when we started actually understand uh, what what was going on <clears throat> so you had the chance actually to communicate uh, about the pandemic before other markets mm -hmm. i don't know if you noticed but there was also some critics uh, about the fact that most of the work was very similar you know 
all the COVID right. ones, yeah. There was also mm -hmm. some, some, some jokes about it, that there was always the same structure with the same kind of music and so on. So let's say that uh, in the countries where actually the, the, the COVID uh, uh, happened earlier, um, the work obviously was uh, fresher, more interesting, uh, because uh, everything was new. So uh, it was also more, more creative, uh, uh, I have to say. And then the second thing uh, is that the best work that I've seen uh, in, within the network was on the big clients, which is kind of a reverse of the, 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 normally the, the hierarchy. Normally you have like a really great work coming from a small clients, uh, you know, like underdogs. <laughs> because, of, because of the COVID, the COVID was such a global issue that people really needed to, to have a point of view from um, big brands, you know, to get guidance, to get inspiration, uh, uh, to get a little bit of hope regarding the future. So, mm -hmm. and it forced uh, also big global clients actually to give point of view, to be a little bit more inspiring. Uh, I would say kind of Nike style. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so yeah. It, was, it, was, it was interesting to see good work, uh, coming from uh, uh, big clients. Uh, you mentioned Heineken, uh, uh, Nestle, uh, we got uh, Nivea. So a lot of um, international uh, global work, uh, you know, uh, to be actually, to be, to, to be, to be spread uh, al along uh, all uh, the, the markets all over the world. You know, I remember reading one of your interviews uh, where you, you know, this was about 10 months ago uh, and you spoke about, you know, how work, how the work that agencies are dishing out now are, is too safe, uh, you know, with the pandemic here and everything. Would you say is the time for agencies to experiment or go down the usual path and, you know, just play safe? Uh, yes. So, again, you know, we've been focusing in, in, the, in the last, I would say, two or three years, We've been focusing so much into results, uh, the business approach, the integrated uh, approach, uh, that no one uh, was looking anymore uh, at the bravery of, of the work. And I have to say, you know, also uh, from, a, from a creative point, point of view, uh, being uh, a judge on, on, on some of the awards, uh, the work was kind of safe. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. average. I think uh, with, with the COVID, uh, the work uh, uh, became much more brand-led, which is always a, a good thing. Obviously, because of the pandemic was an issue that everybody had at the same time, it made the work a little bit um, uh, uniform, a little bit, uh, you know, I can I say consistent, if, mm -hmm. if, if I can say, which is obviously not so differentiating. So okay. brave, brave, but not so differentiating. That would, would be my, my big, my frame, uh, my analysis of uh, the last uh, eight months. Especially now, <clears throat> after like uh, recovering the situation, you know, trying to communicate the urgency of doing something, uh, you know, on, on try to behave well, uh, to socialize responsibly and so on. I think now brands have to differentiate themselves again and to, to take even a more, uh, um, a, a sharper positioning regarding themselves. I'll give, you an example. I'll give you an example. So, for example, uh, you know, brand like uh, Apple now, it's really about creativity. It's getting sharper and sharper. Uh, mm -hmm. Nike is becoming more contextualized, you know. Uh, same with, uh, with Heineken. The work now that we're doing, it's much more topical. It's much more related right. to what's happening outside. And this normally helps to make the work better. Because it, it means that you have to be more relevant. You need to be more contextualized. You need to be, you know, on the now. Mm -hmm. Right. True. You know, but then there's also this small debate, you know, where, uh, you know, sales, of course, with uh, the pandemic here, sales getting affected in a very big way for most brands. Uh, there is a small, uh, small question of whether agencies should work hard to create memorable goodwill-led ads or should they go one step further? and provide real business solutions to the clients and, you know, be a real partner. I, I what think do you that, think? That, hmm. that there, again, there are, um, one thing doesn't exclude the other one. one. One of the big issue with creativity that uh, agencies in the past have been selling like uh, the big idea, the big idea, which is like a uh, media neutral. It's a, it's, 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 it's a problem because it's, it's a, gr it's great on paper, but then when you apply, Mm -hmm. on, on the different touch points, it, bec it becomes much flatter. 
So I think creativity has, has to be like a Caesar. So you mm -hmm. need to see what is about the, the brand strategy and mm -hmm. the brand work. So your brand positioning, what you stand for as a brand. So being very, very clear who you are, what you believe in and so on. And then, and then work instead using data, you know, building consumer journey, touch point, uh, applying then creativity once you have defined the consumer journey. What, when, when you have defined what, what you want to change in the consumer behavior. Creativity doesn't stay in the middle. As I said, it's like a Caesar. Or you go very on top mm -hmm. on, the, on the brand level, defining you know, what you are as a brand, or you go really at the bottom, trying to be relevant in consumers' life. You know, I, I asked because, you know, I was speaking to a lot of marketers uh, of late and, you know, just like always, uh, the big complaint was, you know, that agencies only want to create communication solutions and, you know, bring, win, uh, bring home those big awards and not really enable, uh, you know, uh, solutions for, you know, their sales issues. So, you know, uh, that, that's a big concern. That's where I'm coming from. <laughs> and, 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 but it's, it's the difference between uh, strategic and tactical. Sometimes Absolutely. this kind of work, you know, to solve uh, like a uh, sales problem. So it's, it's very tactical. You solve it uh, for the next six months, but then mm -hmm. also you need to work in a way that you need to solve the problem or, you know, what's the issue on a long term. Right. I, I think one, one of the problem, no, it's not a, one of the problems. What happened with the pandemic, uh, we've been working much more ta tactical in short terms. Okay. Let's try, to solve, let's try to solve the problems in the next three months, not, not in the next three years. Right, right. No, because for most brands, it's pretty much a question of survival. I mean, they might not really see three years if you don't work on there right now. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Make, make sense. But at, the, at the same time, you, you need to have a plan that is, is, is long lasting. So if, even if you're losing money, if you're losing, you know, a market share whatsoever in, in the short term. So you need to plan long term in any case. Otherwise, it's very difficult to survive. And especially now, in, in a moment of uncertainty, people want to connect and to link to, to brands that give them a safe. That they, they, you know, that they feel like, oh, this brand will stay. Right. Right. We, we need, we need, we need to, in this moment, we really need stability, you know? So that's why, you know, we, we trying to get more uh, stable relationship, uh, you know, uh, we, we trying to get more stable life uh, and we need to have also more stable, uh, uh brands. Absolutely. No, you know, uh, in the past, uh, I think four, five months, uh, what have been the most difficult decisions that you had to make? You know, recently agencies like uh, Droga5 said that, you know, they had to cut 7% of their staff in US. I bet Publicy also must have had to let go a lot of a lot of talent because of course, cut cutting measures. Must be very difficult for you from, uh, from the perspective of a global head because agencies at the end of the day thrive on talent, right? So yeah. what were the difficult decisions for you? Uh, again, my, my role doesn't impact directly on, on who to keep and who to let go. My role is, uh, is more about the, to make sure that the, the good people are actually are, uh, uh, stay, stay, stay well and they're happy and they don't get depressed. Uh, so it's also a, a way actually to influence their moral. Uh, so uh, I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, for example, the internal award that, that, that we had was also to keep up the, with the moral, you know, uh, right. not having awards for creatives, obviously, it's, 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 it's not a big issue in a situation like that because we have a bigger issue, but at the same time, it's a, it's a, it's a motivation. To, to keep doing well, to keep work, coming to work in the morning or to spending like eight hours in front of uh, a, a computer or a, or, a Skype, uh, or a Skype meeting. So uh, I wouldn't say that I had the difficult, so the difficult uh, choices to make uh, because I had to work like day, day by day to make sure that, uh, you know, all the good people, all the people that are in the, in the key position stayed uh, uh, happy. Okay, makes sense. You know, you spoke about the awards. Uh, what has been the most impactful work that came out of publicity worldwide during the pandemic? And which country is it from? <laughs> uh, it, we had like a several good, uh, good, uh, good, good, uh, good pieces. 
Um, I would say obviously that the Burger King uh, uh, modeling Whopper has been very visible in terms of uh, PR. You know that uh, the, the 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 Whopper, the the, the burger that is uh, went off. Uh, but uh, if I can mention, I really, I really would like to mention the um, actually the Nivea work. Uh, which one? Sorry, your voice. Nivea, Nivea is a new client oh. that we got. We got a uh, buyer stuff, uh, and and during the pandemic, uh, we, I really liked the, the the work that has been developed on uh, on uh, on the care positioning. So you know, in a moment where. Um, it was very easy to forget about actually taking care of ourselves and other people. I, a brand message, you know, uh, uh, from, from, from Nivea uh, regarding mm -hmm. caring was, was really, really nice. And I, I, I really liked it. Uh, then uh, uh, I would say, uh, yes, the, the back to bars on, on Heineken was very interesting because it was a business solution. It was not just a communication thing. So right. we, on, on Heineken, uh, we decided instead of communicating like a point of view or something like that, uh, to take action and support bars, which are uh, in, a, in, a, in a big crisis at the moment. Right. I think that same ad can be applied even in the Indian market because bars are slowly opening up here in Delhi as well. So I think it will just fit fine. <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's, it's really weird and it's kind of funny, you know, to go, because the thing, the, the, the thing when you go to a bar, and you especially you start having a beer, then you start relaxing, and then you don't think anymore about the rules that you have to respect. You know, <laughs> washing your hands, uh, keeping the distance. Uh, so it's it's really part of your of your nature. When you go to a bar, it's a typical moment when you really relax. Right. You don't think about rules anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> and this is like you have to be on your guard all the time, even with uh, two drinks down. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. Fantastic. You know, tell me what has your advice been for to your CCOs across markets? You know, most, most of the markets are kind of slowly opening up, uh, though the pandemic is not going anywhere so soon. Uh, what has been your advice? Uh, I have to say that in general, uh, I can tell that not being, being in the same room, so working face to face uh, has been impacting also the work. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I can tell that, you know, um, Working from distance, uh, I think, doesn't help uh, to go deeper uh, in, in sharpening insights, uh, understanding what's the real issue and, and, and so on. So I would say like uh, going back to normal work, uh, uh, obviously it's ne necessary to do it step by step, uh, but especially for creative people, being able actually to, to um, see face to face uh, uh, and to discuss, you know, to go a little bit deeper and to mm -hmm. make, make the work a little bit less uh, superficial is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is something that actually that to me is really needed. The second thing uh, <clears throat> is related also to the question that you made me uh, before, you know, is, 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 is it more important actually to get to in, impactful uh, work in, in terms of numbers or also in terms of uh, uh, memorability? So I think we need to revise uh, our idea of storytelling. Storytelling now is becoming so important. And especially because during this, uh, this uh, COVID time, we've been watching so many films, we've been reading more books, we've been watching uh, more uh, TV series. So we got in love again with the storytelling. And I think part of our job is to revise also in advertising storytelling in an interesting way. Okay. So two, two key advice. <laughs> Pieces of advice, yeah, fantastic. You know, tell me, uh, you know, uh, in the beginning part of the pand, I mean, just when it started, I think a lot of pitches were put on hold, but now they're pretty much back in action. So, which are the big account wins that you would like to talk about, global and uh, from your India office? Uh, I mean, uh, globally, I really am really happy for a couple of uh, uh, media wins, and in particular the JSK one, which is mm -hmm. our uh, is a global client, uh, and in Brazil it was a big, big uh, uh, win. Uh, on, a, on a local level, uh, we won uh, Barilla, which is uh, the pasta uh, in, in, in Italy, uh, which is also a very, a very interesting uh, brand uh, as well. And they became much more uh, uh, relevant uh, during, the, during the pandemic. Uh, then uh, there are other wins uh, like uh, Sephora uh, and, uh, and Heinz. Uh, there is a new one that is coming, but I cannot, uh, I cannot tell you uh, yet. <laughs> okay. but, uh, I would be very pleased uh, to actually announce it uh, quite soon. And then, and then uh, as I told you, I'm very pleased uh, to, to see the, the new work uh, coming from uh, uh, Nivea, which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, a win of, uh, uh, of last year. But, you know, uh, uh, seeing like a good work coming from a new client is always nice. 
Okay. You know, I, I have to ask you this. You know, if you had to pick one Indian brand for which for whom you would want to make an ad, which one would it be? Uh -huh. This is a, a good question. I mean, I always been a big fan of Times of India. Uh, ah. I, I know Agnello Diaz, I know Sentil, uh, because in my, my past career, I used to work for JWT, and I always love the, the work that uh, they, 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 they've been doing, uh, and uh, it's one of the, 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 I think, one of the most uh, awarded uh, Indian brand uh, uh, in the world. Uh, so th th that's for sure. But uh, regarding my agency, I have to say that I really, as I, uh, as I mentioned before, I, I really uh, like the, the work that has been done on ZTV. Uh, okay. This is a for approach, uh, mentioning using media, best, this, this best use of media, you know, waiting actually for the day uh, that actually all the soap opera actually uh, went back to, to, to make all the announcement. Really, really smart. I really love the work. Okay, fantastic. I think we love that ad too, the Z ad, yes. <laughs> and, and one more thing, um, you know, most agencies worldwide have faced the brunt of the lockdown with a reduced client spends. How soon do you see demands returning to your key markets? Uh, it, it, it depends on the category, you know. Uh, for example, I think uh, uh, fashion brands will get back uh, uh, very soon. So, for mm -hmm. example, if you look in, in China, you know, which was a, a big disaster uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, now numbers are, are back to normal. I okay. think uh, in cars uh, will be slower. So, you know, the category, uh, it, will it will take a little bit longer to, to, to recover. Depends, uh, you know, um, uh, category by, by category. Um, in, in, in general, what I see is like in, 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 in food in particular, a lot okay. of keep changing. Because, you know, during the pandemic, we've been using uh, and we've been eating like certain food. Uh, now uh, other type of food. So, so it's really it's really changing and it's not that stable. So uh, this is where I'm, I'm also keeping my eye uh, on uh, to see what, uh, what, what will be the, the future. For sure, what's interesting regarding food, um, all the trend uh, related to glamorous food, uh, you know, how the food look like, uh, uh, trying new things out uh, is a little bit gone. And now mm -hmm. we are really back to an emotional relationship with food much more, um, uh, let's say, to, to the basic food. Uh, and, and, and so it's no more about the, the how food uh, look, you know? How fancy it is, yeah. Ex exactly, but it's much more about our emotional relationship uh, with food, uh, with people, sharing the same table, all, all these kind of things. That's a big change that happened during the COVID. You know, and in India specifically, we have the festive season and the IPL coming up, which is good news. Yeah. So what would your advice be to your CCOs, uh, Vikash and uh, Vasabjit? So, so make the work, especially to keep, to keep your creatives happy. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Have you got a chance to meet them after they were elevated? Of course, I'm guessing not because it was very recent. <laughs> not yet. Very, very recent, as I said. Hopefully, I will be, I will be in India in, in February. Ah, okay. And, and one last question, uh, what is that one thing that will change forever for creative agencies across the world after the pandemic? So one thing for sure is uh, the way we work together. So even going back to normal, we will never go back to like say eight or 10 hours in the office. For that will be much more flexible. So we, we learn that we can, we, can, we, can, we can work from distance which doesn't mean that we have to stay this way all the time, but we can be much more flexible. It means that, for example, a lot of meetings will happen on, 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 on Skype. Or, you know, I used to spend most of my time actually traveling to have a physical meeting with clients. And, you know, in the last uh, six months, uh, I, by, I just been doing uh, Skype meetings uh, and actually sometimes actually the meetings were sharper faster, uh, easier to take decisions. Uh, so that I think will not uh, uh, get back. That, 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 that part will, will stay. Uh, the way we, re we, we rebalance with the uh, human connection, uh, to me it's more about internal work. When you really wanna get crafted, when you really wanna go a little bit deeper, you know, uh, then obviously you, you need to have uh, uh, physical meetings. Absolutely. So here's, here's hoping that, you know, when we look back at the pandemic a few months, a few years later, we look at it as an opportunity and 
you know not an obstacle so it was it was delightful talking to you uh, mr batelli and uh, i hope the next time we speak it's not a virtual meeting though it's convenient like you mentioned but i would really would like to meet you when you come down to india maybe in february absolutely and and also also in canna uh, next year allah ko hasat <laughs> yes absolutely thank you thank you so much for joining us uh, that's me saying thank you from the viewers also it was a pleasure uh, i mean again uh, it was really nice actually to to talk to you and i really hope to see you soon absolutely cheers <laughs> bye bye